Wow. Well, can I just first of all say, um, today, you know, I really was hankering and pining to, to feel this sort of soul connection. I was walking in the park and just thinking, you know, I feel a little bit lonely. To the point where I went to Lidl's after teaching yoga, saw this lovely Muslim lady who had very defined eyebrows. And I was just looking at her and she went, do I know you? And, and I said, no, you don't know me. Uh, but I said, can we have a cuddle? So I gave this woman who I'd never met before a cuddle and it's been a really magical day. And I've come into this amazing space and everybody that I've spoken to has been so real and open and warm. And whoa, whoa. And I'm, I'm completely new to this space and you're all really, the people that I've spoken to are fucking amazing. Wow, so I feel so excited. Um, and Beverly, who just did this amazing talk, wow, 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 she invited me. So thank you, Beverly, if she's still here. Well, hey. Okay, so this was not planned, although my partner did say to me, I told him about the wild card, and he did say to me, you should do it. And I was like, no, 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 I'm not going to do it because I'm feeling a bit wobbly today. I was feeling that sort of lonely, pining thing. And this has been my character, really. I'm a real feeler, and I'm an empath, and I cry. I cry at the drop of a hat. I cry at the weather report, as my daughter will tell you. Um... And there's a long story on perhaps why that is. It gives me a huge amount of empathy. But um, I want to tell you the story of my life in a way. So all my life, pretty much, um, I've never really been able to receive much love, especially from men. And um, I always had this such a strong belief, I will never have love. I will never meet anybody. There's no one for me. Now, people would say to me, but you're beautiful. And it was like, no, 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 I've got this perfume. I seem to wear this perfume that repels men. You know, they just, they just, they sort of might come into my field, but then they just go again. I'd never seen, you know, and I just got it wrong in my 20s, in my 30s. And my friends, you know, would sort of say to me, you can, you will meet somebody, just you, you believe and believe. And it was just like, no, I thought I'd been cursed. I just, I just thought, you know, it's karmic. God fucking knows what I thought it was. It, it just, it, it, and it was a daily sadness, a deep, deep, deep longing. And this feeling of I'm a freak. I am a freak of nature, you know, and looking at people in relationships and just feeling so jealous and just, you know, just normal everyday people and thinking, what have they got? Why can't I do it? Why can't I do it? Um, and, I've, you know, it's not like I was lonely in the sense of I had beautiful friends and I, I'm a, I've got a great career, I'm a yogi and um, I hold workshops and I coach people and all of that. But it's something just, that missing, if you haven't got your best mate, a best mate, like this amazing, amazing couple, it's like you can see that. And when you know that's possible, you just want it so much, don't you? Well, there's hope. There is hope. If I can fucking do it, anyone can do it. I swear to you. I am 45. I met him two years ago. And, um, you know, if I, I would say to people, I was like a crack record. I will never meet anyone. It's not for me. God doesn't want that for me. God wants me to help everybody else. But no, 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 not for me. Anyway. So, um, as I say, I'm a yogi, kundalini yoga, same as Bev, that's how we know each other really. And, um, you know, I've been practicing yoga pretty much since I was little. Um, and this particular form of yoga, kundalini yoga, is through the lineage of the Sikh. So it comes from yoga, which is Indian Advaita Vedanta, but um, the man that kind of took it to another level was a man called Yogi Bhajan and um, that was in the 60s and it spread all over the planet and um, I'd been teaching for about 12 years and um, trying, 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 you know, trying to go and see a healer to clear my aura and goodness knows bloody what, you know, I tried everything and um, one day just a colleague of mine said, how are you? And I went, oh, I sound like a crack record, oh, I'm lonely, I still want to meet the one, I just want to meet anybody, please, God, bring me a man <laughs> that will love me, that will love me, for me, for me, and that we can have this divine, divine um, healing 
uh, loving, joyful experience, you know. And I know it's like you can't necessarily do certain healing unless you have that person. Um, and she just turned around to me and went, have you heard of So Purk? And I was like, no, what's that? And being in Kundalini, you should know about So Purk. So I was like, what does that mean? Well, it means the primal one, So Purk. And um, it's from this Sikh lineage. It's a prayer. And it was given by one of the Sikh gurus, Guru Ramdas, who is the guru of the heart. Some of you, I'm sure some of you may know of Guru Ramdas. Ramdas means servant of God. And he was the guru, the fourth guru of the heart. And he gave this prayer to um, the Sikh women or to women um, to find a godly man, a good man. God really means good man, a good man, a man that's, you know, he not just cares for you, but he cares for community and he cares he, you know he's he's aligned to something greater um and you know people yeah he's got a mission and um that's the sort of man I wanted because that's who I am I've got a mission I want to heal people and create heaven on earth why not so um so so poor and I was like I don't know what that is but she told me that so I went away and it was this long prayer this long um, every single word, never heard of it before. So purk, so purk, niranjan har, niranjan hara agaman agam apara. That's the first fucking line. That took me a bloody week to learn it. Oh, I had to bloody rewind it. Listen, rewind it, listen, try and say it. Try. I've not got the greatest of memory either. I am. Um, anyway, so I determined, I played the sound of, of a beautiful yogi lady from, um, for, yeah, from America who'd sort of learned it as well. Um, during my sleep, I played it in my house all the time, whether I was there or not, it was going through in, in my subconscious. And um, I also decided to write a letter to God. Now, I've done my lists before. Oh, my God, yes, I have. Um, but this was slightly different because the list, the, the, the letter was as if he was already there. So I was like, dear God, thank you so much for my husband. And we're like Tweedledee and Tweedledum. Um, we're just, we just fit like glue. And I am just so, so blessed. You know, our families merge. Um, and I just made this whole letter um, saying thank you to God already. And all the things that I had longed for were in the letter. And so every single morning, I would um, get my so pork uh, wording and practice it sentence by sentence. Um, and I'd have my hand on my heart as I did it, close my eyes. And then afterwards, I would read the letter. Now, there were some days I might cry. I might think, it's not going to happen. I know it's not going to happen because I'm a fucking freak of nature. But I would still do it anyway. And I kept doing it and kept doing it and kept doing it. And um, one day I was going to Tesco's and I bumped into a friend who was actually a student of mine. She said, how are you? And I said, oh, I feel like I'm a crack record. I'm still really longing to meet somebody and I just don't seem to. And it's never worked out for me. And she went, I know somebody actually. And I would like to introduce you to him. And he's a meditator. Um, and I think you'd get on really, really well. And I just sort of thought, yeah, that's happened so many times that people say stuff and it doesn't happen. Anyway, so then he kind of um, just Facebooked me one day and this was like six months this was sort of six months um of doing this praying and doing stuff and we just had a little interaction not much and then one day on facebook um i put something about xavier rudd i emailed him went xavier rudd and he sent me some music back, which was so similar, such a similar genre. I was just like, wow, this is amazing. And when I looked at his face, whereas in the, in the past, it was like, I'd always want to force or push, or there'd be a lot of head filled full of, I don't deserve. There was just something really, really um, easy inside of me, which just, ah, oh, I think I am going to meet you one day. And it was just that. And then I just carried on. I just carried on with my life. Then, 
in one day, maybe three months later or something, I just got this email from him saying, I'm coming to London. He's Cornish man. He's lovely. Um, And he said to me, I'm coming to London and um, I'm going on an intimacy or independence workshop. Would you like to come with me? intimacy or independence oh my god what a date what a date to go on for the weekend it's like let's get intimate let's learn some fucking skills yeah (laughs) on your first date on your first date so I was a little bit forward and I said well if you'd like you can stay at my house (laughs) so of course he did of course he said yeah all right then and um So the time came and um, he came, with, um, the friend that introduced us had us to dinner for the first night, you know, come to dinner so we'd sort of have an introduction. And when I knocked on the door, I mean, my heart was like this. And he opened the door and it was, it was just like, hello, you're fucking gorgeous. Absolute, sorry, I'm a bit of a swearer. Um, he was so gorgeous and we just had the most amazing night. We went home after, my, my friend in total embarrassment said, you two need to go home and get to know each other. And is it nearly 10 minutes? Yeah, so anyway, um, from that, we didn't sleep together that night. I was very good. And then we went to the amazing, amazing workshop. We learned all the these amazing skills and um, that night that night we went out we went all into central London and we we did we got it together we got it together and he's been the most amazing man he is a godly man you know from I did sleep with him that night but on the second night (laughs) I had been five years I hadn't had sex for five years oh my god this is on camera I don't believe it I saved myself um and he was so lovely because from the moment I said goodbye to him and he went off to Cornwall he rang me and he rang me and he rang me and he reassured me and he loved me and we've been honest and we've had that intimacy and I've spoken my truth spoken from my heart he knows I'm completely crazy and he still loves me and it's it's possible for everybody hallelujah praise the lord Woo!